Hi and welcome to Code with Stein. In this video series I will show you how to build a job board using Django and Vue. The code will consist mostly of Django for the backend and Vue will be used for form validation, submitting data to the backend and similar. The project we will be building during this series will be called Coding Jobs. The project will be split into two parts. One, one part for the employers and one part for the job seekers. I will build a separate admin area for the employers where they can submit the jobs, change their profile and similar. And then there will be a part where the job seekers can find available jobs, apply to jobs and also contact the employers. I also have a lot of other cool ideas for features to be implemented, but let's come back to those later. I will take this project from A to C meaning that I will begin by installing the things we need and then I will finish by deploying the project to a server. I'm going to explain everything as well as I can as I code. If you have any problems, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll answer as soon as I can. So, let's open up a command line and let's get started. I will begin by creating a virtual environment. A virtual environment is a self-contained directory that contains Python packages installed separately just for a particular project. This makes it easy to maintain, deploy and similar. If you don't have a virtual environment installed, you can install it by running pip install virtual env and hit enter. I already have it, so I don't need to run this now. When you're ready, you can create a new environment by running virtual env Coding jobs 364. Coding jobs is the name of the project. 364 is the Python version I'm running. And hit enter. Don't worry if you have a slightly different Python version than me. The most important thing is that it's newer than 3.6, which is the lowest version that Django supports. Okay, now we have a virtual environment to work in. Let's go into it and activate it. CD coding jobs. We activate it by running source bin activate. As you can see here to the left, the name of the environment appears. This means that it's activated and Python packages we installed will only be installed inside this environment. The first package we are going to install is Django. To install it, we are in pip install Django. This will install the latest stable version of Django and some dependencies that Django has. Now that Django is installed, we can create the Django project. Django admin start project coding jobs. So then we can go into it, cd coding jobs. And now I want to go to Visual Studio Code or the editor you prefer and open it there. So I want to look at the different files that we have. First, there's manage.py. This is a command line utility to do administrative tasks like initialize database, create the Django apps and similar. When you run the command to create the Django project, we also got a folder with the same name as the project. Here's even more files. The first one, init.py, is just an empty file telling, Django, no, telling Python to treat this folder as a package. Settings.py, is a file containing configuration for the whole project, like database connection, template information, and similar. URLs.py is where you set up all the URLs for your project. It's almost like a table of contents for the whole project. ASGI.py is an entry point for ASGI compatible web servers to serve your project, and the same is with WSGI. Don't be scared or uncertain if you don't understand what they really do. I will come back to them, and when we start adding code to the project, they will definitely make more sense. Django project usually consists of a bunch of apps. A Django app is a collection of views, templates, models, and similar. An example of an app is a blog or a user profile. Let's come back to this when we have created our first app. It will make more sense then. To create the first app, we need to go back to the command line. I will begin by creating a folder called apps. This is the folder I want to use as a parent to all the apps. It will give us a good and clean structure. The first app I want to create is called core. This will contain the views for our front page, login, sign up and similar. I need to create one more folder for this. 
mkdir apps core. And to create the actual app, we need to run one more command. Python manage.py, which we use to run the administrative tasks. Start app, and then the name, which is core, and then the location, which is apps slash core. And hit enter. Don't worry if you think that there are a lot of commands to remember. When you created a few Django projects yourself, you will remember them after a while. Let's go back to VS Code to look at the contents of the app. So here we have a migrations folder and a couple of new files. The init.py is the same as in coding jobs. Admin.py is where we register our database model with the built-in Django admin interface. Apps.py is configurations for the app. Migrations is a folder which will contain generated information about the database model, what fields were updated, indexes and similar. Models.py is a very important file. This is where we describe to Django what the information should look like in a database. An example of a model can be a post, a comment, a category and similar. Tests.py is a file where we can register tests for the app to make sure that it will run smooth. Views.py is where we register views for the app. A view can be a function to render the front page, the contact page and similar. As I said earlier, this might be much information to take in at once, but when we start adding code to these different files you will see what happens and they will probably make more sense. Django still doesn't know that the core app we created actually exists, so we need to add this to the list of installed apps. This is done inside coding apps slash settings.py. Here we have a list of installed apps. At the bottom we can add apps.core. These are default apps that comes with Django, so we can have an admin interface, we can support authentication, sessions and similar. So now that Django knows that the app exists, let's make it possible to see something in the browser. Inside the core folder, we're going to create a new folder called templates. By default, Django will look for this folder inside all of the installed apps. Inside the templates folder, we create one more folder called core. This is to make it easier to separate the apps from each other later. And then inside the core folder, we create a new file called base.html. We can add some HTML here, add, and then a meta, what to set the char set, utf8, and then a title, coding jobs, and then just a very simple body, welcome to coding jobs, and save. Okay, now we need to tell Django to use this template. To do this, we need to create something called a view. These are located inside the views.py file. Just to remove this comment. I'll create a view for the front page. Def for define front page. Pass in a request. This is information about the browser, the URL and similar. Return render. This is a shortcut function from Django to generate HTML. Pass in the request here again, and then we tell it to use the core slash base.html file. So it will find this core folder inside the templates and then the base.html file. And we can save this. And then the last thing we need to do now is to tell Django that when we go to the start of our website, we should show this view. This is done inside the urls.py file. This is located in here together with settings.py. First I can import the view we just created from apps.core.views import front page. And then we can append it to the URL patterns path. This can just be empty now because the URL for the front page is just the domain name. And then we pass in the view front page and give it a name so we can reference it at other places front page so now it's time to see what this looks like in the browser first we need to go to the command line to start the web server python manage.py run server luckily for us django comes with a built-in web server 
this is just meant to be used during development. You can copy this address and go to the browser. Perfect, everything here looks great. This is the heading we added. The contents here come from the base.html file we created. I want to change this a little bit because I want the base.html template to be used as a base for the whole project and then other templates should just extend this. To do this, I need to go back to VS Code and create a new file in the core folder called frontpage.html. The first line I'm going to add here is an expression used to extend a template. Extends core slash base.html. Before I do anything more here, I want to go back to base.html and do a little change there. So inside the body, I just want to remove the title and replace it with the template expression. Block content and block and save. I can also add a very simple menu above here. Nav, strong coding jobs and some space between them. This is a template block and it's a part of the template language that Django has built in. I can copy this block and paste it inside the front page.html. And inside this block I create the title front page and save. What happens now is that the content we have added inside here will automatically be placed inside here when it's rendered. So if I now just open up views.py again, I replace base with front page and save. So if I now go back to the browser to refresh, you will see that I have this simple menu up here or just the title of the page and then the title for the front page. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. I will add more content to the front page later. I want to use a CSS framework called Bulma. This will make it look much better. You can also use Bootstrap if you want, but if you end up using Bootstrap, things the HTML will be a little bit different. To include Bulma, I first go in here in the base.html styles. And then I add a link rel style sheet href cdn.jsdeliver.net slash npm bulma at 0 0.90 css bulma.min.css. This will give us the newest version of bulma. If you want, you can download this file and serve it yourself. You can also add a, one more meta field, meta name, viewport, content, width, equals device, width, initial scale equals one. So it will be responsive. And then I can just change this a little bit, remove, add a comment, nav bar, nav class, Nav bar is light, so it's light gray. Div class nav bar brand. This will be the logo. A class nav bar item. Strong coding jobs. Then I want to end the nav bar. And around the content, I want to Add one more comment here, main content and main content and then add a section class section which will give some space around the content. And save. So if I go back now and refresh it looks much better. I want this to link to the front page and to do this I add the href and then a new template expression url which is a function from django and then we pass in front page and save this name here 
is this name. So now Django will automatically connect this link with this view. If I save now, refresh, you can click here and now go to the front page. Perfect. Okay, let's create a page where the users can sign up. Let's begin by creating a new file, signup.html. I also want this to extend the base. Extend core slash base.html block content. Just close it before I forget it. And in here I want a container. Container div class columns. I don't want it as wide as the screen. Div class column is six and is offset three. So it's at the middle of the screen. H1 class title sign up paragraph show sign up. Oh, show sign up form here. So this is where the form will go later. Okay, now we need to create a view for this. And this is in the views.py again. Def sign up, pass in the request, return render request core slash sign up.html and save. And then we need to import this into the urls.py file here together with the front page. Path sign up pass in sign up and then the name is also sign up so we can reference it in the menu. And then last but not least I want to add a button up in the menu. So below the navbar brand I create one more div give it a class navbar menu. And I want this to be located to the right on the screen. So therefore I give it a class navbar end. Div class navbar bar item. And one more div for the buttons. Because I want multiple buttons here. A A G R F. Use the URL function again and pass in sign up. Class button is success so it's nice and green strong sign up then we can save we can go to the browser refresh so now we have a green button here and if i click it i'll be sent to the sign up page perfect everything seems to be working i can go back and forth there and that's it for the first part of this series in the next part i'm going to make it possible to sign up log in and log out. If you like this video please click like below and share it with your friends. If you want a notification when the next part is published you need to subscribe and remember to click the bell as well. See you next time.